So last week I made a video about the RTX 3090 and how that had a really high memory temperature on that G6X. And I did some more testing, I undervolted and underclocked my GPU, and I'm going to share those results with you today in this video. Now, if you're not sure about how to undervolt and underclock your GPU, make sure to check out my previous video first, and that's a guide and that will show you how to do that. But if you already know how to do that, then you can continue watching this video, and at the end of the video, I'm also going to share other ideas that I have about lowering your memory temperature and your GPU core temperature. So let's talk about results for both mining and for gaming, and we'll go with mining first. Now the objective of all of this testing was to lower the memory junction temperature because the G6X was getting very hot, particularly in the 3090 it was going over 100 degrees. So the first thing I did was to, was to undervolt the card, and as you can see there I stepped down 50 millivolts each time but each time the memory junction temperature was still going over 100 degrees. Now uh, the highest I ever got was about 104 degrees. So, uh, but the testing here shows that I got it to 100, um, and then after that, I decided to uh, end the test because I didn't want it to get too hot. So this could very well be over 100 degrees. But after I undervolted it uh, 150 millivolts down to 700 millivolts, I got an error. So I decided to step back up to 750. Now the next thing I did was to lower the clocks and that did a little bit. Now I finally started to get under 100 degrees, so I got to about 98. Now technically um, this lower clock, uh, the difference is more than the 2 degrees that you see here because once again that default clock could be like 104, 106 degrees. Now the next thing I did was to lower the power limits. So I stepped down by 10% each time. So I went from uh, 90 to 80 and down to 70. At 70% 70 it was unstable and the clock speeds were all over the place. It was going like 200 to 1000 and then uh, it wasn't stable at a particular clock speed. So uh, that result isn't really valid where you see you've got the 90 memory junction temperature. But I believe that um, at the 80% power limit, uh, if you're undervolting down to 725, the power limit is already higher than your actual voltage. So that doesn't really mean anything, which means it didn't actually adjust the memory junction temperature. But once you get down to 78% for the power limits, then your memory junction once again uh, decreases. Now the next thing I did was to increase the fan speed. And if you increase the fan speed, that's when you really start to lower your GPU core temperature, which actually um, then started to affect the memory junction temperature as well. Now, I think the reason why is because it's all both on the one heatsink, at least for this design of the 3090. So the, the memory and the GPU are sharing the same heatsink. So if you lower the GPU core, then you're also going to have an effect on that memory junction temperature because now that memory can use up more of that heatsink. And if you lower the memory clock all the way down to 500 megahertz, you do get a lower memory junction temperature. So if you do all of those things, you can lower the memory junction temperature by at least 12 degrees, if not more. Let's talk about gaming. Now, Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the most performance intensive games. It uses a lot of memory and it uses about 12 gigabytes of VRAM at 4K Ultra with the ray tracing turned to Ultra. Now, I believe Microsoft Flight Simulator can do even more than that and I wanted to test that out, but uh, after about four days of downloading and uh, it was just going way too slow on my internet connection, so I gave up on that. Uh, so I've only tested on Cyberpunk 2077 and Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, Cyberpunk 2077, the memory junction temperature is pretty good. It's at about 80 degrees on default for this, so I don't believe that it could get any higher than this. So I think uh, I did the testing anyway, just to see how far I can uh, lower that memory junction temperature. But I think at 80 degrees, uh, in my personal opinion, I think 80 degrees is okay. And you're probably fine to keep it at that temperature. Now the first thing I did was, of course, to undervolt this card. And you can see here, you get a little bit of a drop in the memory junction temperature. If you lower the power limit, you can uh, lower that memory junction temperature again. 
and once again if you lower that fan speed that keeps on dropping and if you lower that memory clock it keeps on dropping again so you can get a pretty significant drop in the memory junction temperatures so even if it's kind of hot on your 3090 you, these are the things that you can do to lower that memory junction temperature now I also tested this in Port Royal Benchmark, Time Spy Benchmark and Red Dead Redemption 2 and the memory junction temperatures were pretty good. For Red Dead Redemption 2 I played this at 4K Ultra and it's at 82 degrees so I don't think it's going to go any higher than that. So they're the results for both mining and gaming and I think the gaming results are pretty good. At least in terms of the games and benchmarks that I tested it seemed like it didn't go over 82 degrees. And I think 82 degrees, in my opinion, seems okay to me. Now, uh, there are cases where, uh, for example, I showed you that article from Tom's Hardware where Metro Exodus went over 100 degrees. So there are going to be some cases where you're going to have to babysit the car, the 3080 and the 3090, to make sure that the temperatures for, or the memory temperatures are going to be okay. Now, I think... In terms of uh, mining, that's a different story because you're going to have that card on all of the time. So you want to lower that temperature down and uh, I think uh, even 88 degrees is really hot. So uh, I did buy some thermal pads but I don't think I'm going to actually put these on because uh, I don't want to open up my $1800 card because uh, there's a three year warranty on it and even though I might not value the warranty as much, I'm thinking about selling the card anyway at some stage so other people may want that warranty and so uh, I think I, I want to try some other ways to lower that temperature first and so I did a lot of other things as well I bought these heat sinks um, so they're these little heat sinks that are about uh, two centimeters uh, wide by five centimeters by about one centimeter high and I'm going to try and put those on the GPU first um, I have already done so, but I didn't put any thermal pads down between the backplate and the heatsink, so I need to do that. But I just dropped it onto the backplate and it lowered it by about 2 degrees. Uh, I bought an external fan which I plug into the motherboard, and uh, this is a 90 centimeter by 90 centimeter fan. I'm going to try it with a uh, 120 centimeter fan as well, although that's going to stick out a little bit from that uh, GPU. Uh, but uh, this lowered it by about 2 to 4 degrees, so I went from 88 degrees uh, from that last test I did in mining down to about 82, even 80 degrees sometimes, depending on the miner that I was using. So at 80 degrees, I think that's pretty okay, and uh, I'm going to keep trying other solutions first before I open up my uh, graphics card. Okay, so that's all I've got today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, make sure to hit the like button. Also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.